How are you investing in yourself? How have you invested in yourself? Oh, girl, never. You never invest in yourself? So, yeah. I think that these things would be really beneficial to you. But in addition to that, just recognizing your need to invest in yourself is a really great thing. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Joining Your Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. Today we have a little bit of a different background and some new scenery because I'm at the playground multitasking and being a mom, as I typically do. Uh, <laughs> today's conversation, we're talking about investing in yourself. Investing your talent is what I like to say. I am not only talking about your monetary talent as in the dineros because yes sometimes you have to invest those too in order to get on your path to purpose but understanding that a lot of times you can invest your talents with absolutely no money necessary because your talents are gifts that are aligned with the purpose that God has placed on your life when you were born. Like, you know that thing you enjoy and you do so well? You were literally born to do it. And so today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about the process of investing your talents, why it's so important to invest your talents, and also giving you some tips and tricks and solutions to get started investing your talent with joy. Now, I'm giving you guys a little bit of a heads up. This week's episode, there may be a slight audio shift as well as a visual shift because I am taking a good chunk of this week's episode from a faith-fueled, purpose-propelled live that I did back in 2020, where I spoke on my Instagram channel about this very topic. So if you hear an audio shift or if you all of a sudden see that I look completely different, my hair is shorter, um, or the time of day is different, that's exactly why. Make sure you guys keep listening through the entire episode because after I share a little bit about the parable of investing your talents, I'll be sharing some solutions, some tips, some tricks, and you know it, I'm gonna be dropping some joy gems about how you can start investing your talents with little to no money at all. I hope you guys enjoy the conversation and I'll see you at the end of the episode. So for the past couple of weeks, you guys know that I've been talking about how we are basically at war, how your joy and your purpose is the key to getting through these tough times that we're facing, both with coronavirus and police brutality and racism and just like basically all of the heavy mess that's happening. Man, Tapping into your joy and tapping into your purpose is the answer. Why? Because your purpose is your power. Even in the midst of the hardest of times and situations, we are meant to glorify God and, and pray and advocate for ourselves and petition with thankfulness in our hearts. Because as we're able to do this, we're able to see our way through the, the rough times that we're experiencing and in a way that blesses others, but also um, really allows us to... Um, pour into others with joy as well because the Lord didn't put us here to be miserable so today as I was doing my devotions uh, a couple of things came to me and I'm just gonna read my devotional today because it was a really good one and it says receive my glory strength when ongoing problems require you to stick it out over the long haul beware responding by grimly gritting your teeth just passing time in a gloomy frame of mind this passive negative attitude is not the way. I want you to approach difficult times. I am sovereign over the circumstances of your life, so there are always opportunities to be found in them. Don't be like the man who hid his master's talent in the ground because he was disgruntled by his circumstances. He gave up and took the easy way out, blaming his hard situation rather than making the most of his opportunity. Actually, the more difficult your circumstance, the more you can gain through it. I gladly give you glory strength. It is exceedingly potent because the Spirit himself empowers you, strengthening you in your inner being. Moreover, my limitless glory strength enables you to keep on enduring the undurable. Since this power is so vast, there is more than enough of it to spill over into joy. So this spoke to me for a number of reasons. We shouldn't allow the enemy to rob us of the joy that we have to experience in this world it's like one of the greatest strengths that you can have because in accepting and like living a life that is joy filled you are then able to tap into your purpose as you tap into your purpose your purpose fuels your 
joy. It's like this cycle. It's an ongoing cycle that I always talk about. But more than anything, being able to look at life from this perspective, even in the hardest of times, strengthens your faith. And um, your faith strengthens your patience. And your patience strengthens your perseverance. So no matter what comes at you, no matter when it comes at at you, no matter how it comes at you, you can always come from a position of uh, strength and, and fortitude and just like a different perspective that doesn't keep you downtrodden and burdened. In that devotion, it talks about the man with the hidden talents. Um, I'm going to read that, that scripture because um, even in the midst of what we're going through right now, there are so many opportunities. I mean, I know I, know I always say this, but even in considering my joy, I, I remember putting up a post a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, like, it's not like I'm blind to the things that are happening in the world. You know, I, I and I don't choose to ignore them because as a black woman, I, I do feel a certain type of way. As a black mom, I feel a certain type of way. As a, as a wife to a black man, you know, all these things make me feel some type of way. When Corona happened, um, you know, I'm human. So at first I was like, whoa, Lord, what's happening? But then in, in knowing that I'm in this world but not of it and also recognizing um, my journey to purpose, J-O-Y-R-N-E-Y, my journey to purpose, I'm able to see things from a different perspective where I'm not uh, trapped by the same things that would typically trap other people but I'm able to see it from a perspective that's higher than my own. That's not me at work, that's the Holy Spirit at work. Um, but with this piece, I am then able to see things from a different perspective that allows me to see the opportunities in everything that happens. So when I say that I work with people in transitional phases of life, I mean the college, high school graduate that is now trying to figure out what am I going to do for college? Like what what is my first semester of college if you've already enrolled going to look like? For the college student that's graduating and it's like, well, I was planning on getting a job, but I don't know what to do. Like what, how, I'm, mm, what's happening? Are they hiring? Like right now, unemployment's at an all time high. I get that because I was once there as well. Um, in that same transitional phase, I graduated during uh, the recession of 2009. Um, and then also for parents who are just entering parenthood, women who are becoming moms and who've lost sight of themselves and are, are unsure of how to handle this new normal um, or looking to rediscover themselves in a way that they haven't been able to in a long time because they've been so busy pouring into other people. Or maybe you are somebody who is retiring um, or has retired and you still haven't figured out what you want to do with the rest of your life. Because really, it shouldn't be that you're sitting at home on the couch because the rest of the, your life is the best of your life. You know, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to take your um, life and really use it to glorify God? Not just in a matter of uh, settling for the ordinary, but really doing stuff from a position of joy, purpose, gratitude, and ultimately um, honoring the gifts and the talents that he's given you. Um, that's, that's where my work comes in. Um, but I'm going to get into that more of that later. Um, I'm just going to read this. Um, and it says, again, it would be like a man going on a journey, journey, who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To, oh, first of all, I should tell you where I'm reading. Matthew 25, 14 is where I'm starting. Um, to one, he gave five talents of money. To another, two talents. And to another one, one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your share your master's happiness. That The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, 
I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on, on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the one talent, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. So in the same way, guys, like, there's a message here of expecting, being expected to, to use the things that we have, even when the situation or the circumstance seems like not the most, um, like the most perfect, you know? And in that same way, and I mean, here in this parable, the Lord is talking about talents, like uh, the, the currency that they had back then. Um, but in that same way we can also look at it like talents like the gifts that god has given us right like if god has given you a talent he did, he hasn't given it to you so that you can hide it under a rock he hasn't given it to you so that you can uh store it away for a rainy day or so that you can keep it for yourself and then not do anything with it he's given it to you so that you could glorify him with whatever that gift and that talent is but moreover that talent is is a part of your purpose it is a part of your purpose and I always say this but your purpose is your power there is something about your situation there is something about your circumstance there is something about your background there is something about your experience and the way that it mixes and meshes with your gifts and your talents that is meant to create a shift and a change in the world somehow the question is are you gonna sit on those things um, and not utilize them because the 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 timing doesn't seem opportune or perfect no is it going to be something where you take that talent and you're going to hide it away um because no one seems to want it right now but let me give you a secret okay most people don't even know what they want until they see it okay but not only that more than anything god has given you this thing because he's created you for a divine purpose he is hey he has created you to do like intentional things in his world like to, to to use those gifts and those talents to produce a harvest of good fruit not just fruit not just you know like just settling for whatever comes your way no like god has created and put intention and purpose in everything that he's created from the moon to the stars to the clouds to this, these trees that I, I, for some reason, I keep talking about trees and how trees like look like simple plants, but trees have many purposes. In that same way, you, with all of your gifts and all of your talents and all of your experience and all of your background and all of all of your things are also meant to do great things. I need you guys to recognize that even though right now all of these things are happening in the world and it doesn't seem like the right time or the perfect time for anything, that doesn't mean that you don't invest your talent. That doesn't mean that you don't utilize your gift. That doesn't mean that you just sit there and wait for the perfect time because let me tell you something, there will never be a perfect time. But it's also something where we only have but one job on this earth, right? Because you can't control what somebody else is going to do. You don't. You can't control the traje trajectory of where the the things of this world are going to go. But the only thing that you can control is like your role in the world. And you, living in your purpose means living in your power. The more you live in your purpose and your power, the more you are then able to impact and and shift and change um, the outcome of the world. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Like this idea of changing the world, people think you gotta be a celebrity to do it. People think you have to have tons of money to do it. People think that you have to like have all of like these things in order to do the one thing that you were put here to do. But you really don't. All you have to do is live in your joy and live in your purpose. Um, and, and, and recognize that in doing those two things, you are able to change the world, literally change the world. And also recognize that God is abundant. So the moment you start to live in your joy, the moment you start to live in your purpose, all of these things that you think you need in order to produce that change, 
that you don't or may not currently have access to, which you, you do, you probably just aren't recognizing it because you aren't living in your joy and your purpose, potentially. Um, all of those things that you need and, and think you want, the Lord will then start to put in your circle. He will start to, he'll start to help you manifest those things um, in rewarding your faith. Because really when you move in joy and purpose, it strengthens your faith. And as you strengthen your faith, then you're able to then live uh more in accordance with what he's called you to do it's a beautiful hey girl um it's a beautiful circle like joy living in joy and purpose <laughs> invigorates your faith in a way that the lord just wants to keep giving you like goodness and he's not a god of scarcity he wants us to have good things he wants us to live pleasurable lives he wants us to live in the divine inheritance that he promised jacob isaac and abraham okay but what we need to do is do our part in living faithful lives. And that starts simply by living in joy and purpose. Doing what you were put here to do. Not settling for everyday lives and, and, and living in accordance with what society tells you you need to be doing. When that is not, it may in all actuality not be a part of what you actually want to do. All of these people that are at home right now who were initially mad about the quarantine thinking, oh, like I, I I now don't I don't have a job now or I'm unemployed or um, like I'm stuck at home with nothing to do this is the time to double down on your purpose this is the time to live live by faith okay trusting that where you are right now is exactly where you need to be and when you need to be so you can get still and get clear on where you want to be going going forward so many people have been living their life on autopilot up until this point because it's just what they thought they had to do. Well, now there's this great disruption. Unemployment's on an all-time high. Most people don't have jobs right now or are in, a, are in a position where maybe they're not working as much. Now is the time for you to discover your purpose. Now is the time for you to rediscover yourself in a way that you may not have been able to for months or for years even. But times like these are, are, are blessings because it allow, allows us to get still and meditate on what it is that God really wants for us to, to do in our lives. Um, man, it's awesome. Let me read these scriptures that I have for y'all. Right, so Colossians, Colossians 1, uh, 11. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Ooh, and I talk about this all the time, how once you start to move this and, and ask for guidance and where you should go and what you should be doing, the spirit then really does start to give you the answers. It's a part of that abundance that I mentioned to you guys. And once you start to take that move of faith, moving by faith and trusting that um, you in, in living in accordance with your will and your purpose, he will supply you with what you want and what you need an abundance of those things and more including guidance um, and we pray this in order that you may have a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work growing the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light dang Lord thank you for wrapping through me I didn't even know that it was going to be that, but that's what it is. But that's exactly what I said, what I stated earlier. So praise God for um, guidance of the scripture. Um, and I shared with you guys Matthew 25, but I'm going to read that one scripture out of everything that I read. And it says, so I was afraid and went and hid out your hid, went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. In that same way, guys, as he gives us gifts and talents, we are not meant to hide them. Your life is supposed to be a living sacrifice, right? But the great part in being a living sacrifice when you are a child of God is that your sacrifice is simply you living in your purpose and living in your joy and, and taking on your role in his kingdom, which is simply <laughs> sharing and executing the gifts that he's given you. Uh, like where they do that at like where else is it that the one job that you have is to live in joy and do the things that you've been put here to do 
as you seek first his kingdom. And I remember reading that scripture as a child and thinking like, oh, like I got to do all these things and it, it's limiting. But really, as you as you seek first his kingdom and as you live in accordance with your purpose, you actually gain freedom. All those rules and things that people think you have to follow as a believer. First of all, that's not how um, Christianity works. Like that's not how being a follower of Christ works. Like I think that's more Judaism, like following laws and doctrines and stuff like that because they they follow more the Old Testament. But our new covenant covenant is in Christ Jesus and he's given us freedom. And really the main part the main part of that covenant is just believing and living by faith. Living by faith. And in living by faith, you will access joy in your purpose. And it's just, again, that beautiful cycle. All you got to do is believe, y'all. Take the step. Take a step of belief in living a life that you are actually called into. Not settling for a life that you think you have to live based on, like, things around you. All right. Uh, getting back to the main thing. Sorry. One more scripture. Ephesians 3. 16 through 19 says um, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power to gather with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God yeah I pray that for everybody I pray that for everybody because the moment you start to do that, the moment the, the moment you're able to do that, the moment you're actually able to get free. And as you are able to get free from the distractions of this world, which is all the mess and the chaos that we deal with on a daily basis, the sooner and more able you are to live in accordance with your calling and your purpose. Once you're able to access this knowledge so that you're able to attain that peace, then you are able to gain your freedom and move um, with joy. You're no longer bound down and you're able to also find new solutions where some people may be stuck. Um, to God be the glory because this isn't something that I came to on my own. I had to go through my own transitional phase, okay? It happened once when I graduated from college and I didn't know what to do and it happened again when I became a mom. And that's part of the reason why those are two of the groups that I work with because I know what it's like to feel lost and depressed. I know what it's like to be confused and feel like you're doing all the things but nothing is happening I know what it's like to be crying at a job that you hate for hours on end and just like waiting to be for the day to be over I know what it's like to be at home and like be super excited about the blessing of the children that you've been given but then also at the same time feeling like you don't know what you're here for I know what it's like and it's not a feeling that I wish for anybody and and also to be doing a lot of things but feel like you're doing absolutely nothing because that is also something that I've experienced as a multi-passionate creative you know at one point I thought that my my job was to just be an artist and create a bunch of pretty things but creating things without purpose just feels like it feels like nothing okay <laughs> like it, 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 you're not fulfilled and here while we're here on this earth like if we're gonna be here we might as well do it living fulfilled life all right so now you know a little bit about why you need to be investing your talents but the better question especially if you are someone who has considerably less resources than you think you need you're probably wondering Erica you promised me some solutions where are they how can I start investing in myself don't worry I have a whole other IGTV live that I did back in 2020 that shares the answers to those very questions how to start investing your talents when you feel as though you have limited resources to get started in the process of pursuing your purpose you ready because i'm dropping it right now as i mentioned investing a lot of people are probably um thinking about money like having the time and the resources to be able to do that because otherwise how can you invest with your, in yourself if you don't have the funds right um it's not about having all the money in the world but recognizing that you are rich in all the ways that matter you are rich in blessings you are rich in peace you can be rich in I like to call it the three W's. You're, you're rich in your wellness, your wisdom, and in your wallet. Because the two lead to the latter. How you feel is one of the most important things that you can pay attention to. And where you should start investing your resources. And when I say your resources, I don't, again, mean financial resources. But time is something that a lot of people need to start recognizing is a resource. 
if you have the time that is actually that's the most precious resource that you have okay um, because it's something it's, it's the most valuable commodity that we don't put a value on um, when people think of their time and they think of going to work all the time um, realize that they are putting a value on your time even if you're not putting a value on your time so if it's a matter of you going to a job that you really don't enjoy realize that you could be investing that time in yourself or even if you get off if you feel as though you don't have um, all the time in the world just Investing some of that time back into yourself when you get back home can make all of the difference. Um, how do you feel? Do you feel empty in the, uh, right now? Do you feel depleted um, at the moment? In paying attention to these things, you'll start to recognize the areas of your life that you need to start investing your time and your energy into. So time is a resource that I've started to mention. Another resource is um, your energy, <laughs> okay, where you invest your energy, where you invest your uh, attention, because where your mind goes, there your heart will go also. And recognizing how you invest those things, not only into others, but yourself, allows you to really recognize um, where you could afford to um, better what is the word that I'm looking for? Better allocate <laughs> your investment of yourself. Uh, Y'all feeling what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Um, so pay attention to that. The second thing that you can start to do to start investing in yourself is start trimming off the fat. Now I've started to talk about the things that you could start to put your attention towards or you're investing yourself towards um, as in terms of the resources. But also recognize that you can start cutting off the things that don't make you feel good. Okay, cut off, trim off the fat, cut off the fat. Okay, the same way you won't eat a piece of pork that has all the fatty pieces on it because it won't make you feel good in the long run. That's the same way you need to be looking at the things in your life that just generally don't make you feel good. Think of the things that you're consuming, the uh, media that you consume, it, the, the people around you that may be taking up your time or even the food that you eat when you think about that like all anything and everything that doesn't make you feel good is one thing more the more you cut them off will help you re recognize um all of the ways in which you are allocating your energy your resources and all of those things that aren't serving you but if they aren't ultimately putting you on path for your purpose or helping you uh find live or serve in your joy then they got to go they have got to go point blank period and you'd be surprised how much more time energy and um just joy you'll have in your life in the process and the more you live in your joy again the more you're able to um activate and actively live in your purpose the third piece um, that I would like to share about investing in yourself is just like rest, allowing your si yourself the time to rest and relax. Um, so I want to say, yes, babe. I ate a bubble. I ate a bubble. Oh, yummy! Um, au revoir. Go play. Hi. We have ten minutes. Rest, read, rest, relax, and surrender. Recognize that while you may not have all of the monetary resources that you need at the monetary monetary resources that you have at the moment, if you are able to read, then you have one of the greatest resources of all time because reading is power. Okay, not just if you go to school, but in your ability to educate yourself. And if you're able to educate yourself, then you are ultimately able to empower yourself, which is the greatest investment of all. You don't need to go to college. You don't need to have a four-year degree. You don't need to have all the money in the world in order to like get into prestigious programs. All you need to have is the um, ability and the desire to research what it is that you want. And back in the day, you would have had to have, go to the library and do things, but now we have the internet at our disposal. So you're able to find books that can help you um, gain knowledge about the things that you desire to know. You can go online and research videos Research videos of people who are doing what it is that you want to do or who are examples of things that you'd like to do. They can become your mentors from afar. So while some people want to have like one-on-one -on -one time with everyone, realize that the ability to even have access to someone's story is powerful in and of itself. You don't have to know them personally in order to glean from um, them the lessons that they've uh that they themselves have gained over time. Reading. I am a person who believes in the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and listening to um, 
uh, reading the word, like getting in your Bible um, and making sure that you're reading the scriptures and speaking those things over your life. Because some of those are some of the most powerful and the greatest words that you have access to. And also the Bible itself has like so many stories, so many messages and so many um powerful instructions that will help us land where we want to be in life if we pay attention to them so so many people look at the bible as like a dead book that's three thousand years old but the bible is the living word it is it is very alive and well and i've shared many i'm I'm gonna move um i've shared many experiences that i've had where something has been revealed to me that i've asked uh i've asked like I've, I've asked in prayer and I looked down in the Bible and the message or the answer that I've been looking for was directly given to me. So recognize that there's also power in investing in yourself through reading, but also investing in your spiritual life. Okay. Um, if anything, that's really number one, but I just had to give it to you guys last, but you know, it's, it's the most important thing, investing in your spiritual life, recognizing that as you ask for the question, ask the questions the answers will be given to you when I say rest I mean after you put the thing out into the atmosphere in the universe and you've communicated with the creator what your thought may be rest and wait for the response don't just go asking and then like doing whatever it is that you want because as God receives it he um well one he's already begun to work on it but like if we act impulsively and just going ahead and doing what we want we can be counterproductive to the plan that's already in place. So rest and wait to hear what he says. Um, Relax and trust that what you have prayed for and asked for will be delivered to you and is already in the works. And then surrender in um, your joy and allow the process to be what it's going to be, you know, in trust and by faith. If you like this, please share it with a friend Um, and I hope that it blesses you guys in some way and that you found it beneficial. This brings us to the end of this week's episode. I hope that you found it useful. I would drop some joy gems but I mean technically this whole episode was a joy gem. Am I right or am I right? I'm definitely right. (laughs) The scriptures that were read from Matthew I believe are some that are so important for us to take note of and take heed of really. Our talents not only produce gold but they are gold when we know how to use them right if you are someone who is looking to begin the process of investing your talents now that you have somewhat of an outline but you want to start creating a vision and you want to start taking the steps that are needed in order to propel your purpose i hope that you are subscribed to my newsletter because i am going to be dropping some things in the next couple of weeks that you definitely don't want to miss we have a program that'll be opening sometime in October and it is called journey to purpose vision casting and it is it is an amazing six-week experience that will help not only give you clarity about what gives you joy and help you figure out how to create a system a habit a routine around that joy but it'll also give you a strategy to turn those joy-led habits into purpose propelled actionable steps that will help you align with your overall vision in a way that allows you to touch move and inspire the world in a greater way i know that that's a mouthful and i know that that's a lot you'll be hearing more about it in the coming weeks but in the meantime make sure you head on over to ericalassan.com and subscribe to the newsletter so that you don't miss any updates in the upcoming weeks leading up to that event because it is going to be good without further ado i hope that you guys have a wonderful evening or day, or whatever time of the day you're listening to this. I'm gonna pay attention to my kids now, but I hope that you guys have a great day and I can't wait to chat with you next week. Until then, remember, we're in this together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye.